Welcome back. Let's now consider how we can uh, quantify the trade-off between overfitting and underfitting by measuring and comparing the train and test errors of our model in, on a specific uh, machine learning prediction problem. So uh, more precisely, we will consider how those train and test errors uh, vary when we change the complexity of the model, uh, the parameters of the model, and also when we change the size of the training set. Um, so let's get started. So here you see again the same example where we have our black training data points and we fit a blue prediction function, which is a nine, uh, large degree polynomial in this case. And we have the orange uh, data points uh, that are not been seen during the training uh, procedure and are just there uh, to evaluate the test error. Um, so the goal here again is to predict y given x. Uh, so here we want to qualify, quantify the quality of the model uh, by measuring the errors on the test data, which is the fundamental objective of machine learning, is to, to make good prediction that generalize to unseen data. But we can also quantify the error on the trained data. And by contrasting the two, we will get a better picture of what happens to our model. Oops, sorry. Uh, so let's first consider the impact of some parameters of the model. Here, we again have a, a black and orange data points, and we fit a first model, which is a degree one polynomial. So it's just a, a straight line, a linear model. Uh, on the right hand side here, you see that here we have degree no, uh, one polynomial. We measure the, the train error and the test error, which is basically the average distance between the prediction in blue and uh, the points, the observed point, both in the training set and in the test set. Okay, so in general, we make slightly more, uh, slightly less er errors on the training set because we have seen those points, so it's easier to remember them than the, t the test set. So if we try that many times, on average, the test error is always going to be above the train error. So now fit, let's fit a second model, a degree two polynomial. And here you see we get this quadratic line, which better fit the overall shape of the data. And therefore, both errors uh, decrease because uh, it, it fits the shape of both the test and train data. If we keep on moving and going uh, up, up in complexity by fitting a degree nine polynomial, you see that the, the train error uh, still decreases the model is more, uh, more and more able to go through the black data points or to go close to them. But then it starts to also memorize uh, noise uh, elements from those black data points that are not really something that generalized to the orange data point. And therefore, you see that the, the test error starts to go up. And if we go beyond with higher complexity models such as the degree nine polynomial, you see that this phenomenon gets extreme. And here we have very large errors. And uh, in particular, you see here, uh, we have extreme prediction predicted values here on the boundary, which uh, are really bad because we would expect that uh, on those boundary, we would like to, to have uh, predictions in, in that region and not here at all. So, and furthermore, in the middle, it's, it's doing those uh, small variations which are, which are kind of useless. Uh, so they are also causing errors. Um, so if we summarize this curve, uh, we can get an intuition on uh, the behavior, the impact of the, the, the complexity of the model, which is quantified by the, the degree of the polynomial that we used to, to fit the model. And uh, for different uh, values of that parameter, we see that we have different behavior of the prediction function. Uh, here, when the polynomial degree is low, uh, the, the, both the train and test error are high. Uh, you see in particular the test error, which is the one that we are most interested, uh, is not optimal. And it's kind of pushed up by the train error. 
So here, in this case, the model underfit. The, the, the model is too simple or too constrained, not flexible enough. And both the train error and the test error are up because the train error is pushing the test error up. Okay. Then if we increase the complexity to two, three, five uh, degrees, we see that we have some kind of nice sweet spot, spot where the uh, test error is minimum. Uh, but at the same time, the train error continues to, to go down. And if we go further, we see that the, then we have a large gap between the train and test error. And this is typically the regime where we say that the model overfit. And uh, the, the model is bad, uh, even though the train error is very low and can go to zero if you, if you keep on uh, exploring with a higher complexity model. The test error will be uh, too high because of the noise of the data, basically, and the lack of data points. We can also do conduct a similar study by changing uh, the, the size of the training set while fixing the parameters of the model. So let's do this, for instance, for degree 9 polynomial, the one that would overfit previously. Uh, so here we fit it on the black data point again. So there are a few black data points, uh, 30 of them or something like that. And we have many orange data points to have a high quality uh, measurement of the test error. And here again, you see that for a small data set, you see that there is a big gap between train and test error. So it's uh, the case where we have overfitting because we have the gap between train and test. If we increase the number of data points, you see that the function is getting smoother, uh, less extreme variations, and the test error uh, decreases sharply and goes closer to the train error. At the same time, the train error goes up a bit. So we see that uh, maybe the model starts to underfit, maybe not, it could be something else. But more importantly, the, tr the test error is decreasing by a lot and getting closer. So here, we, with a more than a 1,000 data points, you see that the two lines have joined. So probably it's the case that we have enough number of samples and we will recover something that is uh, very close to the, the optimal model. And if we go beyond, uh, you see we, that we make no further improvement or a very small improvement in the test error. Like they are, they are almost flat. Okay, and so here indeed you see that the degree nine polynomial that uh, we have found by fitting on those black data points is very very close to the ground truth function, the data generative process that we use to generate this data set. So here it's possible to get a degree nine polynomial to not overfit anymore by increasing the size of the data points, and at some point you sh you reach diminishing returns because you st you still get some non-zero test error because there is some noise in the generative process that you will never be able to, uh, to explain uh, just using the X variable. So this is a, a fundamental level of error, which is called the bias error rate or the irreducible noise uh, that you cannot go beyond. So this is the bias error rate. This is the error of the best model trained on unlimited amount of data. So in our case, the data generative process is a degree nine polynomial, and we recovered exactly the same prediction function. And we cannot go do better because uh, the remaining prediction errors, they just come from the, the noise in the data generative process. So this is the, the best that we can do. Uh, finally, I just want to emphasize uh, that the, uh, the, the fact that the model is complex or not does not just depend on one specific hyperparameter, such as the degree of a polynomial, but can also depend on the class of model that we use. Uh, so here on this same data set, we fit two simple models, a polynomial and a decision tree. So the decision tree will basically predict constant, uh, piecewise constant values. And at threshold for the X variable, it will switch the constant value that it will uh, predict. So in that region, it predicts this constant value. In this small region, it predicts this constant value. And they are again. So you see that this function here is 
kind of simple. It doesn't. It cannot really overfit the the noise of the of the data point. So it's a bit similar to this simple polynomial here. Uh, but uh, both of them are reasonable prediction function, uh, but they are slightly different from one another. So it's hard to tell whether or not one is simpler or more complex than the other. And this choice of the family, the family of model is also part of what we call the inductive bias, which is basically the, the, the shape of the prediction function that one model class will favor over another. And so they have different notions of complexity. In particular, if, if you increase the number of splits in the decision tree, or if you increase the degree of the polynomial, you can build in both cases a decision function that overfit the noise. You see here, this uh, variation, those structure here, they are basically uh, overfitting uh, the noise of the training data because of the lack uh, of data points. And so if we decide to go from a complex model to a less complex model by changing a parameter, this is what we call regularization, where we favor smooth, simple functions over highly complex prediction functions like this by changing a parameter of the model. So the take home message from this presentation are the, the model overfits uh, mainly uh, when the number of examples in the training set is too small compared to the flexibility of the model. And so the testing error is much bigger than the training error. This is the, 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 the easiest way to detect overfitting is to compare the train and test error and you see that there is a big gap between the two. Uh, on the other hand, model can over underfit uh, when they fail to capture the shape of the training set. And in this case, you will observe that the training error has to be large. Uh, however, the training error could also be large because of the noise of the data generative process. So uh, we do not necessarily know whether when we have a high training error, whether it's because of underfitting or because of the er irreducible error. Uh, and finally, keep in mind that different model families uh, have different uh, complexity and different inductive bias. Thank you very much for your attention.